You may have read books about it before, but I don't think you've ever heard it or seen it of how to pray the tabernacle. Everything about this was given by God. It was designed by Almighty God. There are seven pieces of furniture which represents perfection with God in this tabernacle. It's the brazen offer. It's the laver of water. And then you go, this is the outer court, and I'll talk about it when we're praying it. But then you go into the two rooms, which is the holy place. And inside that room are three pieces of furniture, which is the golden candlestick, which is the table of showbread, and which is the altar of incense. And then you go into the last room, which is the holy presence of God, or the holy of holies. In there, you will find the Ark of the Covenant. And then on top of that Ark of the Covenant, you will find that mercy seat that we all need. So the first thing we do is that the Bible says, when you get to the door, when you're going into the outer court of the Gentiles, he said, enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. And when we get to that gate of thanksgiving, we come to the largest piece of furniture in this tabernacle. If you will notice, all other pieces of furniture could fit inside of this piece of furniture. Where we're trying to get to tonight, and you can't bypass any of these positions to get here, but where we're trying to get to is right here. This is the power and the glory. This is the holiest of holies. But notice that the altar is much bigger than the ark. The more prayer and repentance, the more power and glory that manifests in itself. We come to this brazen altar. God, this is where in the Old Testament that priest had to come with those lambs twice a day. You robed yourself in flesh. And you came to that altar that we call the cross. And there, God, you died for us. And it was for our repentance. And your blood was shed for our remission of sin. So tonight, we come here repenting of everything in our life that's not pleasing to you. We leave that all to repentance. And we come to the next piece of furniture. And this is where the priest would minister. This is known as the laver of water. So understand our prayer thus far. It's easy to learn. You open with praise and thanksgiving. Then you come into repentance. And I'm not going to go into dimensions on how big these are. But this laver of water. That priest was bloody when he got through here. And when he got through, open up the sacrifice. And he had to wash his feet and he had to wash his hands. In the doctrinal layout, this is baptism in Jesus' name. When we're buried with him in baptism, we don't baptize here for church membership. We baptize here for the remission or the forgiving of all sins. But this laver of water and praying the tabernacle is where it talks about in Ephesians 5 that we're washed by the word. So when I get here, and I'm not gonna do it tonight for sake of time, but when I get here, I pause and I read the Word of God. We have now entered into the first room of the tabernacle. Out here, no covering. The light was natural light. It was the sun by day, it was the moon by night. All of this out here was all natural lighting. But now when you move from this outer court, and you move into the holy place. This only received its light from that seven golden candlesticks or the seven, or this menorah with the seven golden candlesticks that represents the seven churches of the book of Revelation. This was hollow. And whatever you poured in here, you could pour it till it filled up. This was the seven golden candlestick. It was oil that kept it going. The priest would visit this place twice a day. And when he came in, he would make sure that the wicks were clean because there was to be no smoke. It was to be pure light that was to be coming off of this candlestick. 
There was to be no smoke. It was strictly going to be light. And it had to stay full of oil. So he attended it twice a day. Where did he get the fire? He got the fire that never went out from off to the altar of sacrifice. He would bring the fire from that altar. He would bring it to the candlestick. And that's where he would light it. And he would keep that light going because it was the light of the world. This is the table of showbread. On this table of showbread, on the Sabbath day, they would put 12 fresh loaves of bread. Those 12 loaves of bread represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Now I love the significance of that bread because the priests would eat that bread, watch this, and it would give them strength for the journey. But when they took that bread out with them and they sat down at a table to eat, the priests that had imperfections, the priests that were not worthy to go into the holy place, they could sit down and they could eat that showbread and they could celebrate Jesus. I want everyone in this room to know that God is your bread of life. We leave this piece of furniture, this showbread, and here we come to the altar of incense. That priest would get that, all the different uh, perfume together, stacking the Annika, the Bible says, and Calvinum. He would take those three spices and he would mix them together. And they would mix them and put them inside this bowl. And it was an altar of intercession. It was a sweet, sweet smell and savor unto God. It went up to please him. This became the altar of intercession. And when I get here, if it was spoken that the prophet took that censer, and when they were dying, he took the censer off of the altar. And the Bible said he went and stood between the living and the dead. And God stayed that disease and gave them the victory. You let me tell you, if that happened in the Old Testament, we have the authority through the power of intercession that God can bring down anything and do anything through the power of intercession. When I prayed all that, we know at the cross that veil was torn in twain. And now we're moving into a room that's 15 by 15 by 15. If you will notice, there's another city that's 15 by 15 by 15, and that's the New Jerusalem. But we're moving in here, we're moving into the holiest of holies. We're moving into where the Ark of the Covenant is. And on top of that Ark of the Covenant set this mercy seat. And that blood, that priest that brought that blood when we started this thing, when we started this thing here, he took that blood in one bucket and he had fire in the other bucket. And he started moving through these different positions and placing the blood. The blood was applied at every position. The blood was applied at the laver of water, at the candlestick, at the showbread. The blood was applied. Then, when he went through this veil, however he got through there, no one knows. But when he got behind that veil with that blood, Jerry, he took that blood in that mercy seat. And he put that blood on that mercy seat. And Almighty God was blinded by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I don't care what sin you had ever committed. I don't care what you had ever done. When that blood is applied to that mercy seat, every sin that they had ever committed was postponed to another year. But now with the cross has been washed away. That blood has been applied to that mercy seat. Thank you for your blood. But inside this ark was Aaron's rod that budded. It represents the authority. It represents the power of the name of Jesus. Through the authority of the name of Jesus and by the power of the ark of the covenant and by that rod of authority, God, we pick it up. I declare your authority. 
I speak your name. You said in your name we could cast out devils. In your name we could speak with new tongues. In your name we could lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So in the name of Jesus, I speak healing in this room right now. In the name of Jesus. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.